NBC presents Short Story. Today, Edgar Allan Poe. Today, a short story from Poe's Tales of the Grotesque and Arabesque, of fears of being buried alive, a classic from the mind and talent of Edgar Allan Poe. Our tale begins in just a moment. And now, The Fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe. This is the history of the House of Usher. I am leaving it as my last will and testament because before this year is over, the cavernous tarn will close over the gables of our decadent home. It was written by our ancestors many years ago that when the rains are blood red, the House of Usher will crumble to the earth. There are three members of the Usher family living, two in direct descent, the Lady Madeline and her twin brother, Roderick. I was engaged to marry Roderick long before I knew my cousin. It is the custom for the Usher family to intermarry. The Lady Madeline has been confined to bed these many weeks, waiting for death, waiting for the last days of her life to pass quietly. I have so little time left, Roderick. I must see Charles before I die. Charles Wilson is tied up in London on business. He can't come down here every time you've a whim to see him. This is no whim. It's just a matter of days before I... Don't be impatient with me. Sister, please. Afraid of the truth, Roderick? You've always been afraid of me. I can read your mind so easily. Look at me, brother. Let's not argue again. You've always wanted me to die. You've waited for it year after year, praying and hoping that I die, leaving you free to inherit the house and the fortune. But you'll be fooled. Look. Look at the rain. This isn't you speaking. It's the fever. Fever or not, the rain is turning red, isn't it? Yes, it it seems that way at times. Each day it will be redder and redder. And darker and... Madeline. Afraid, brother? Are you afraid of blood-red rains? The doctor said you should have rest and quiet. You you weaken yourself when you're excited. Where's Dina? I don't know. I'm not her keeper. She's downstairs, probably, buried in that romantic nonsense that she reads. Every girl likes to read romantic stories, Rod. Heaven help her when she becomes your wife. Call her for me, will you? The doctor's orders were that you are not to be disturbed. Call her, Rod. Do as I say. For your own good, I... I'll get even with you someday. Dina. 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 Madeline. Dina. Did you call me Lady Madeline? Yes, Dina Charles. Come here, my dear. Is there something I can do for you? Yes. I want to see Charles Wilson before... Before I die. I told you he was busy, Maddie. Tell Talbot to hitch up the coach and four, Dina. Go to London tonight. Tell Charles I must see him right away. Bring him back with you. I'll not have Dina go out in this weather. But Rod, Dina, please go. Don't listen to Rod. Do this for me. I will not have strangers dragged into our family secrets. Charles Wilson is no stranger. He's the only one who knows the secret of the house of Usher. I don't like leaving you, cousin. The doctor will be here shortly. Hurry, my dear, and bring Charles back. I forbid it, Dina. If I don't see Charles tonight, I'll be buried alive. Not able to live. Not able to die. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, we'll never get to, to London tonight, Mum. Not in this weather. Not in a million years. It ain't a night for humans to be a bat. The Lady Madeline is dying. The least we can do is grant her her last wish. Dina! Dina! Quickly, Talbot, before Lord Rick tries to catch up with us. Dina, did you hear me call you? Yes, I heard you, cousin. 
tried to protect you, child, because I love you. I don't want any harm to come to my future wife. Please, Ryan. Why do you turn from me when I touch you? I don't know. Afraid of me? I... I... Answer me, Dina. Are you afraid of me? Yes. But you loved me once. That was before we returned to the house of Osher. And you're going anyway? Yes, Roderick. For Madeline's sake. Are you ready, Mum? Yes. Yes, Talbot, ready. We'll be back by midnight, Roderick. Hurry, cousin. Or else the lady Madeline might not live long enough to get her last wish. Did she leave, Roderick? Yes. Madeline, why don't you confide in me? Why must you call in strangers when you know how it humiliates me? I can't trust you, Roderick. Ever since we were children, you've kept one secret from me. What is that secret, Madeline? <laughs> That's one thing you never read aloud of me. What is that secret, Maddie? Leave me alone, brother. I'm ill. You're dying, Madeline. You know you're dying. A secret won't do you any good. Now, what is it? Please, Roderick. Tell me, Madeline, or you won't live to die the way you think you will. <laughs> Tell me, or by heaven, I'll force it out of you. <laughs> This is his house, Mum. Thank you, Chalvin. Mr. Wilson, is he here? Yes, sir. Why, Dean Asher, what are you doing in London at this hour of the night? Come in, my dear. The Lady Madeline sent me. Great heavens, child, your clothes are dressed. Come on in. I'll fix you some hot tea. Oh, we haven't time, Charles. Madeline wants to see you at once. Please come with me right away. The doctor doesn't think she'll live through the night. Madeline? Dying? Oh, she's been ill for months. Charles, you wouldn't know her anymore. Why didn't you let me know before this? Roderick wouldn't let me. Roderick? But why? I can't explain now, Charles. Believe me when I say it's important that you come at once. Talbot's waiting outside. I'm frightened for Madeline. We've got to be back by midnight. <laughs> You came in time, Doctor. Lady Usher, you shouldn't allow your brother to excite you. He has a cruel streak in him at times. Surprisingly like my grandfather. What time is it? Midnight. Here, drink this. It will give you strength. I can't move. Uh, lean against me. There. There. Dr. Bain, you've attended all my family, haven't you? Yes, Lady Usher. You've been closer to us than almost anyone. If I ask you for an honest answer, would you give it to me? That depends on the question. How much longer have I to live? Years, my dear. No, Doctor. I want an honest answer, please. It's imperative that I know... I don't know, really, my dear. Hurry, Talbot. Please hurry. I'm going as fast as the horses can go, Mum. Give me up. Give me up. Faster, Talbot. We won't accomplish anything at all if you lose self-control, Dina. Oh, I'm sorry, Charles, but I've the most dreadful foreboding. Foreboding? I thought Madeline and Roderick were as close as brother and sister could possibly be. They were until about a year ago. What caused the change? Well, I'd been living at the house of Usher for about four months, and Roderick suddenly became, well, nervous, jumpy. He'd lock himself up in his room for days. He was morbid, frightfully morbid. Sounds like a depression of spirit. Oh, it's much deeper than that. Madeline fell ill at the same time. And then the horrible reddish rains began to fall. Red rain? Dina, really? Oh, you'll see. The first day those rains began to fall, the rift between Madden and Roderick widened. Until now, their hate is a living thing. It fills the house. They seem to be battling constantly for possession of each other's soul. 
Charles, look. Look ahead. There's the house. And the rain. Look at the rain. Yes. Red rain. Well, Charles, uh, do come in. We, we've been waiting for you. Oh, it's good to see you again, Roderick. Come in, Dina. Don't stand there staring at me. It's been a long time since I've last seen you, Rod. Yes, uh, a long time. Let me take your coat, Charles. I'll hang it up. Thank you, dear. My sister's waiting, Charles. You'd better go right up. Yes, uh, of course. I'd better warn you, Madeline's delirious. She doesn't quite know what she's saying. Sometime. Uh, Rod, uh, why don't you come up with me? She expressed a desire to see you alone. Charles. Oh, Charles, I'm so glad you came. I had to see you alone. Madeline, don't try to sit up. You'll only weaken oh, yourself. Sit over here, Charles, next to me. You're the only person I can trust, and you must promise to do exactly as I say. Of course, of course. Oh, remember what I told you years ago. Remember about Roderick and me. I told you then that he and I were more than twins. Well, that was just childish fancy. Oh, I wish to God it were. But those suspicions have all been proven these last few months. Roderick and I are, are only one person. Not two. We have two earthly bodies, but we share one soul. When Charles and I were born, our shoulders were attached. The day of our birth, we were separated. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean you share one soul. I've never been able to feel anything for myself. His thoughts are my thoughts. His tears are my tears. His weaknesses are mine. Don't you understand, Charles? Are you sure of this, Madeline? Positive. His mind has the initiative. He doesn't respond to my emotions. Because I have none. None. I'm cold without him. Don't you see? My earthly body is wasting away. But my soul is not my own. As long as he's alive, Charles, the power of his life will keep me living. Madeline, Lady Madeline, you mustn't even think of it. Oh, it's true, though. I'll have a living death. I'll be buried alive. Unable to live. Unable to die. Madeline. That's why I called you here. Promise me now, Charles. You'll never allow my coffin to be sealed. Keep my body in this house. You must rest, Madeline. Stop talking. Do you promise, death. Charles? Promise. Yes, yes, of course I do. I don't tell Roderick Charles, ever. He'll seal me in my tomb alive. Madeline, my, my dear. Every mortal is entitled to his own soul. If I can't rest in death. Oh. If, if I can't rest in death, I'll return from the grave and take him with me. <laughs> Our story continues after this brief pause. And now, back to today's short story. Is my word. What are you doing standing outside this door, Roderick? Tina. Not a nasty child's in privacy. Why do you insist on spying on your own sister? Shut up. I can't understand you, Roderick. There are many things you can't understand, Tina. Come with me downstairs. Let me go. Come along. It's the living room. I'd like to go in and tell Madeline that you were spying on her again. Tell her if you wish. She's a poor, sick thing, unable to lift her arm against me. I don't know how I ever loved you. You'll learn to again after we're married. I hate you, Roderick Usher. I'll never marry you. I... I... In heaven's name! Roderick! Roderick, what's the matter? Pain inside me, crawling like bourbon. Help me, Dina. Oh, of course. Help me. Roderick! <laughs> Dina! It's <laughs> Madeline! She's dead! <sighs> Madeline, 
beside your bed. And you're dead, Madeline. Dead. Two people fought for the possession of one soul, and you've lost. <laughs> You'll try to drag me to the grave with you, but you're weaker than I, Madeline. You'll never return. Never. And that was her last request, Doctor. It's a peculiar request, Mr. Wilson. I know it is, Doctor, but it was the Lady Madeline's last wish. Oh. Roderick. What are you doing here? Taking a last look at my beloved sister's face. Oh. Doctor, I'm not quite sure that the Lady Madeline is dead. Look at the flush of life in her cheeks. Stop speaking like a fool, Charles. Look for yourself, Roderick. What are you trying to do, frighten me? No. I've asked the doctor to verify her death. In cases of this kind, Mr. Wilson, death from catalepsy, the deceased often retains a lifelike flush. But it's merely symptomatic. Nothing supernatural about it. Of course she's dead. Isn't she, Doctor? However, if you feel the slightest doubt... No doubt at all. I'd suggest delaying the burial for a week or two. As the nearest of kin, I want the funeral held at once. She'll be laid to rest in the family catacombs beneath the house. Roderick, I gave her my word. Your word isn't valid. You're not one of the family. But it was my word of honor. Don't mix in family affairs, Charles. But the least you can do is grant her last wish, Roderick. This is nonsense. The dead are best buried. But, Rod, your own sister... No. As the doctor in the case, I don't feel justified in making out a death certificate for two weeks. The Lady Madeline will lie in state in her coffin in the catacombs. The coffin will remain open. For 30 years, these catacombs have been unused. Look at the walls, Dina. Time has encrusted them with nitre. Oh, it's cold in here. Cold and damp. Let's take the coffin this way, Talbot. Watch out, Charles. Don't fall. Be careful. The catacombs have always been soft with slime and nitre. Hard to breathe in here at times, isn't it? Where's the room, Roderick? Ahead. At the end of the corridor. Are you positive we can keep a fire burning in there? Yes, Charles. Uh, Talbot. Yes, sir. Did you start the fire? Oh, yes, sir. I did that early this morning. The room ought to be warm by now, sir. Talbot's a dependable man. He starts warm fires to bring life to death. Roderick, how can you act like that? Your own sister. Yes, my own dear, beloved sister. There, Charles. Look ahead of you. A tiny room at the end of a corridor. The fire is blazing. Careful. Careful with the casket. We'll place it on the table. Center. Oh, All right, sir. And we can place it down. Yes, uh, Yes, Tom. Down there. I know that my redeemer will rest in peace. And that he shall stand at the latter day peace. upon the earth. And though this body be destroyed, yet shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not as a stranger. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord giveth, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Talbot? Talbot? Yes, ma'am. Why, Mum, what are you doing up at this hour of the night? I can't sleep. I keep dreaming that Lady Madeline is crying for help. Where's Lord Roderick? Oh, he couldn't sleep either, Mum. He said he was worried that his sister was cold, Mum. Whatever does he mean by that? Did he go down to the catacombs? Yes, Mum, that he did. He said he wanted to stir the fires a bit. Down there? Oh, wait a minute, Mum. Later, Talbot. I must stop him. I must. I wouldn't go down there, Mum. It's ever so cold at night and damp. I wouldn't go down there myself. I advise Lord Roderick against it, Mum. I did. I told Roderick. 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 The door. The door slammed shut. It's so dark in here. Cold and dark. Roderick. Roderick. Roderick, where are you? Rod. Rod, answer me. Rod. Roderick. Roderick, I can't see. Please, please, help me. I'll get lost in the catacombs. Roderick! Roderick, please! Uh, 
I don't like these goings on at all, I don't. People dying and not getting themselves properly buried. It ain't normal. No, that it ain't. Albert. What? Are you up too, Mr. Wilson? Don't nobody sleep proper in this here house? Where are Miss Dina and Lord Roderick Talbot? Well, I was sitting here as nice as you please, sir. But where is Miss Dina Talbot? Well, yeah, that's what I'm getting to. I was drinking this here cup of tea. When Lord Roderick comes in a little past midnight, or uh, was it a little before midnight? Where is he? Uh, well, well, I'm getting to that. He comes in and he says he does. He wants a flame. Yes? Yeah. He says as calm as you please. He wants to go down and keep his sister from getting cold. And Miss Dina? Well, as for her, she came down a little later and said she dreamt... That the Lady Madeline was calling to her. So she follows Lord Roderick to the catacombs. It ain't proper, sir. It ain't proper. Roderick! Roderick! Oh, oh there's the light. There. Are you calling me, cousin? Oh, Roderick. Roderick, I was so frightened. I thought I was lost. Why did you come down here? I, I dreamt Madeline needed me. Well... What did you do, Rod? Be quiet, Tina. You closed the coffin. Oh, how could you? Don't you approve? You, you were going to drive a, a stake through her coffin. She was a witch, Tina. A witch. Isn't that the custom to drive a stake through the heart of a witch? Watch, Tina. Watch. No. Watch me drive the hammer through her heart. Stop, Rod, stop. Stop that. Roderick, put that stake down in heaven's name. Don't, don't. Leave it alone. Take your hands off. Oh, please, Roderick, please. It's so horrible. Don't you understand? It's your own sister. Your own sister. You pay for this, Dina. You and Madeline together. Oh, Roderick. Help, help me with this. Yes, sir. Pardon me, Lord Roderick. But... Oh. oh, Charles, darling. You came just in time. <laughs> He looks like he was dead, sir, lying there on the sofa. No. No, he's beginning to stir. Keep bathing his face in cool water, dear. Uh, He'll be all right. I'm afraid the shock of Madeline's death is too much for him. The shock of her death, uh, the constant fall of the rain. It's getting redder all the time, Charles. Uh, yes, it is. That's just an electric phenomenon. Oh, don't try to move, Roderick. Oh, it's you, Dina. You again. Lie still, cousin. You'll feel better in a little while. You're both fools. You shouldn't have stopped me. She's a witch. Don't you understand? No, no, Roderick. Listen. Listen, Charles. What? Can't you hear it? What are you talking about? Listen. I told you once my hearing was super acute. I can hear a heart beating. You're over, Rod. Suppose I go for the doctor, Rod. He'll give you a sedative. No. No, don't leave me. But you need your sleep. No, of course you do. All this hard tonight will pass over when the morning comes. And those infernal rains clear. It's not in my mind. She's coming. She's coming for me. I can hear her in the catacombs. Listen, Charles, listen. Roderick, please believe me that you're simply overwrought and emotional. I've got to get out of here. I must leave at once. She's coming for me. Coming. She swore she would. I know she did. I overheard. I overheard her talk with you, Charles. Roderick. Cousin, no, you're hearing things. Now, listen. I can't hear anything. She's leaving the catacombs now. Listen, Charles, don't you hear her breathing? Can't you hear her footsteps? Her sighs? She's in the hallway, Charles. In the hall. Help me, Charles. Help me, Charles. Roderick. She's coming closer. Faster. Faster. Her feet are on the stairs. One by one, she's coming up those stairs. Listen, you can hear her now, can't you? You can hear her now. Charles, look out the window. The rains are blood red. She's outside the door. Listen. Listen, cousin, listen. Madeline! No, sister. No. Leave the house of Usher, Charles. You and Dina, leave this cursed house at once. The rains are blood red. And I've come to reclaim my soul. Adam. No. no. And you, Roderick, you will be soulless forever. (laughs) 
from that chamber and from that mansion, Charles and I fled aghast. The storm was still abroad in all its wrath as we crossed the park to the highway. The moon above the house of Usher was blood red. And Charles held me close as we walked on and on into the night. Tina, my darling. Don't look back. The house has crumbled to the ground. Crumbled into the cavernous tide. Charles. Little Dina. You'll always be safe with me. 